Hello guys, my name is Miguel Sapero. I am the creator of the Voxel Farm Engine. It is 43 degrees Celsius here in Montreal, 110 Fahrenheit. So I will be doing this update from a procedural desert. So we're gonna start where we left off from the previous update. You remember you could take any mesh and use it to add voxels to the world. Let me here just pick a different uh, material to build. I will use a sphere to add voxels to the world. And this is pretty much the same you saw in the last update. The difference now is that I made it so you can use the same mesh to subtract material from the world. So if I click and I do a different type of clip, I will have the volume of the sphere removed from the ground. This is something you could use to create more interesting tool profiles. So sphere is not very interesting, but you could have something like an axe or a big axe even uh, some dynamite going off and creating interesting craters. And this works on any kind of material. Everything you see here is made of voxels. There are no props, there is no an artificial mesh that is uh, floating on top of the voxel geometry. Everything is made out of voxels, so you could go and carve pieces of, out of anything. And we will do just that. If you see this building right here, we're gonna go straight to the building and we're gonna carve some stuff out of the wall. So here you can see how it produces a nice round shape. And you can do it as many times as, as you like. Again, this is round shapes, but it could be cracks, it could be the a little crater, it could be the cannonball, it could be something that looks like the effect of a magic spell or something like that. Like I said in the previous update, it is quite simple to create one of these matches. The only thing you need to do is use a program like Maya or 3D Studio and make sure that your mesh is properly closed, meaning that there are no gaps, there are no open edges in the meshes. If the mesh is watertight, it's something that can voxelize and it can be added or subtracted now anytime to the world. Here I will switch to a different mesh. If you remember the past update, I was using at some point a large flat mesh used to create some kind of uh, slabs. This is the one. So again, I can use it to remove material from the building wall. This could be also used as a very effective way to build things. Let's say you build a massive block of concrete and then using something that is shaped like a doorway, like a tunnel, you dig through this uh, space you have built. The same applies if you're digging through a mountain. Let's say you're creating a huge mine. So you could start digging using something that resembles the profile of your mine. Every time you dig, you get a slightly different shape, so it would be very interesting as we progress. So let's take a step back and look at all the destruction we have created. Yeah, doesn't make any sense, but hopefully you get the point. Now let's move to an entirely different uh, feature. This is something that has occurred to virtually everyone that has worked with an environment like this. It's a very simple, very familiar concept that makes your life a lot simpler. So I still don't have the UI working properly. What I will show you is just the, the core feature, how, how it's implemented. And this is something you really know, you know, as soon as you see it, you will say, well, this is, this is trivial, this is something that was due. But before I will just create a little setup, so I can show you what this is about. So you will see me here just flattening out the earth a little bit. I will add a little set of blocks just to make it flat. So let's say I'm creating this uh, nice feature, it's a small column and I want to have many copies of it. As you can see, I'm, it, it would take me some effort to create the first column. If I had to repeat this effort every time I needed a column, that would be too much work, it's not fun.
So this feature is essentially a way to copy a bunch of voxels and to paste them anywhere you want. The UI is something I still have to figure out because you are looking at this in weird perspective. It's not uh, as you would do in a 3D editor. So the first person, it does complicate the, the copying and pasting a little bit, but here you see me pasting many instances of the same column I have copied. I think this is a really powerful concept. It's not something that will help you just create, it's something that will also help you trade your creations with other people. Because if you are, let's say, building your own house and you want to have a nice column, maybe it's something that you can get from a house somebody else did. So you would go into this sort of a repository where you see all these assets that were created by different people. Now let's move on to a new thing I want to show, and this is the kind of thing I really like showing because it's the one you cannot see. This system uses multiple levels of detail. This creates a challenge because when you have two different levels of detail, one next to another, there will be cracks appearing between them. And this is a problem that is actually very hard to solve. I will raise the camera so you can see this better. What I'm showing you here is the solution to this. This is, a, this is creating seams that go from one net level to the next. As you can see, they look like concentric rings. So every ring is running at a higher level of detail, which means there is less information per area. And the fact you cannot see them, unless I highlight them to you, it means that they are actually working. This was quite difficult to create. It took a lot of time, a lot of thinking. It's not a trivial problem. So I'm quite happy with the results so far. And here is the last feature I want to show today. This is also very subtle. I will just uh, enable something in the code for a moment. I will go back and refresh the view. What you see here is that I have removed all the texturing, all the shadowing, and the colors you see are coming from the terrain. Now the procedural terrain, besides producing the altitude and the caves and all the features you see as volumetric, it also produces a set of coloring. So these colors, they align with the terrain features. You can see that the wherever the, the erosion trails are now covered by a slightly different, uh, lighter shade of, of terrain. We have darker terrain in some spots, here in some other spots. So it looks quite natural and adds a lot of variety. And as soon as you blend this with the rest of the, the texturing and the lighting, all the other stuff that is happening, at the render time, the results are quite nice. So that's it for today. Be sure you don't miss the next update.